This is the first in a series of meetings as we prepare to uh, get ready an integer release of Wolfram Language, version 12. And the uh, thing we're doing is to look at functions that have been tagged as experimental in previous versions and see which things we believe we can commit long-term to and what might need design changes. So first up in our list for today is our anatomy-related functions. So anatomy plot 3D and its friends. So let's take a look at this. The question is, um, are we confident of the way this is working? I, I have to say, I don't think I've had any objections to this for a while. Um, yeah, the, the plot themes are uh, were a nice addition. We added those most recently, and everything seemed to work just fine when we added those. So, right, but um, I mean, the question really, in terms of usage here, let's. Um, I mean, so we've got. Uh, I, I my my tendency is to say that this is fine, ready to go. Um, I I have not really had any problems with it. Um, yeah, so we, haven't, we, we, ha we haven't really gotten any negative feedback or anything like that. I think in general, people liked it. In fact, they were kind of surprised when they saw it. So, right. Yeah, I don't think it's changed. In why is it wiggling so much when I when I try and rotate it? Uh, that's uh, basically it's a graphics three D with a box where the box is turned off, so you're not seeing the corners of the box. But then when you let go, it snaps too. That's the default behavior of the front end for graphics three D. What do you mean? I mean, what? But but the fact that there's a hidden box, I don't understand why we're snapping anything. I mean, this shouldn't snap. It's just a graphics CD. There's nothing special here. No, I I understand that, but I'm saying that for this application, given that I, I see. So if I say box to to true, then I should see the box. Correct. Let me ask another question about the coordinate system for this thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I say, uh, what, what is the coordinate system? Is it in millimeters uh, or yeah, something? It's, yes, it's, it's a unified human measurement system. It's basically it, it in is millimeters in millimeters, yeah. from the bottom of the foot. It's in what? In millimeters from the bottom of the foot vertical upstanding. OK. So that, that's basically the, the and plus the, minus the, on the two sides of the body. Correct. OK. Well, at least it's obvious which way is in front, I suppose. Um, what is this? The region bounds. So if I say something like, um, if I say here, something like plot range, arrow left foot and I say uh, something like I don't even know if this right is foot. A, well no I'm saying third metatarsal is that a bone yes it is a bone so what's this going to look like I see so that and what happens if I want to make the left foot in um, some other style so I can if I say here can I say style left foot and then can I say opacity 0.3 for example what did I do wrong closing curly after the style ah. That's cool. Did it work? I mean, did that metatarsal get them? Um... Hopefully. Well, the metatarsal is part of that foot, so it may have picked up the opacity from. But it shouldn't have done. That would be a bug. Yeah. I mean, do I have to put an explicit style here? I don't think that's there. 
I think that's yeah, we can try. We can try looking into that. The style directive is a bit weird because I know in general the front end's mainly what pays attention to that. Uh, but we, we can definitely look into seeing if style's misbehaving here, if it's doing. All right. <clears throat> what the rest of the graphics 3D system does in this okay. case. Do we believe in the function in this thing called skin style? Because the word skin could have a bunch of other meanings in computational geometry and so on. Do we do we really believe that we're going to, you know, that the word skin is okay to use here? In the context of this function, it's not a well, question, I don't think. I, I, obviously, but we have a general thing called skin style. Right. Which is a little bit weird. Because it you, should you, be anatomy prefaced. I would think so. But then it's rather strange to call it anatomical skin style. Um, I mean, it, right, in the context of this, it looks just fine. I'm not as convinced as I might be here. And I don't know. I mean, Flip, Felix is asking or no someone is asking um oh somebody is asking wasn't flip it somebody else asking um uh you know how many users are there for an area like this it's very hard to know i mean you know we run into people who use it but it's kind of anecdotal um we uh that's the feature of you know high privacy kind of uh, you know prepackaged software um Someone is asking how often the anatomy data packlet is requested. That's a good question. That we probably do know. I don't think we've looked at it. Have we? We have, but I don't know often. Okay. Um, and, and again, that can all be messed up because there might be one example that a bunch of people have seen that would, you know, one example for high school kids or something that happens to include this that would cause a large number of downloads. All right. Let, let's go back to the design question here. Um, the I mean, uh, we, we could use something like epidermis instead of skin, ugh. <laughs> which would at least make it more specific, <laughs> right? And is it in fact the epidermis, or is it? I mean, who knows? I, I don't know how many different layers you know. of the skin there are. I mean, is, 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 you have to get into careful and um, anatomy contextual issues. Like, is epidermis really the full thing we're calling skin? But uh, right. All right, let's let's go back and look a, a little bit more at Anatomy 3D. Okay, so we've got Anatomy 3D. We've also got um, uh, Anatomy Form, which is a directive. Why is that different from Style Form? Is there a style form? Well, I just, I'm sorry, a style rather. That's what I used here. For, was well, One issue is, is that uh, for, uh, anatomy form allows you to give it an association to tag individual substructures within the larger entity. So for example, in that first example, you're asking for the left arm, but you're saying, I want the sub part, which is the biceps brachii to be green. And style doesn't, uh, I'm pretty sure Brett can verify this, uh, does not accept associations or anything like no, that. No, 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 it certainly does not. But but is it even possible to use style in Anatomy Plot 3D? I've seen it work in certain cases, yes. Um, I tend okay. to put explicit directives in. By, on by the way, what are we style. going to do when we finally have the, the female anatomy stuff uh, ready? How are we going to specify that? I believe that's going to be done through the entity reference. In other words, it'll almost be like a, an annotate or a, not an annotation, a qualifier on the entity itself. What are you going to do by default? So, so Jeff, you're saying you do control equal left foot, and it gives you an assuming on that would be male my guess, versus yes. female. Correct. I don't think there would be anything in the function itself, anatomy plot 3D, that would necessarily indicate what you know. Because you know, you know, another question I, mean, I guess I, would be I, animals. I think probably the better female. approach would be to have you know some sort of anatomy <laughs> model. You know, similar to a geo model for geographics. I agree. So an option. Well, and also I have another question. Since we're getting insane or not, the cats and dogs and cows and horses and so on, what are we going to do with those? Are they going to all work through the same function or are they going to have to have their own sets of functions? They better I not sure have, hope they work through the same I sure hope that we don't have a <laughs> horse anatomy plot through. <laughs> um, 
What is the status? So, so Michael, I mean, like, like we have those skeletons and things, right? Uh, we are in the process, I would say. Okay, but so the idea, I agree with, with uh, was it Brett who was saying that, that the, you know, we need an anatomy model like geo model. Yes, that seems sensible. So, but there are, in terms of the, the um, naming of these different pieces, I mean, horses have femos, don't they? I mean, many of the, there is a correspondence, right? That was long studied by the naturalists or whatever, these correspondences between different body parts for different, you know, creatures. Keiko can also do this. Yes, there are a bunch of homological structures, for example, dog and horse are female too. But so are there, so tell me, like, but, but I mean, various animals have bones that humans don't have, right? <laughs> to Right. Okay, so so there in the linguistics, okay, could just so we're talking about something concrete. Can you give me an example of one of those? Um, so, so I'm sorry, I cannot think of the word. Some okay. of the, the various, on the name. Various, uh, did we not discuss the various tailbones? Yeah, oh, yeah uh, for example, right. coda vertebrate one example um, that is um, dog tailbone, coda vertebrate, like. Um, uh, um, 20 that quarter of the blood bones, and those are, of course, not in the human anatomy. Sorry, I, w I didn't hear a few words there, but, but fundamentally, humans don't have tails. Right. Um, okay. So, and, and there are multiple bones in the, in a, uh, there are multiple bones in a dog tail, presumably. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, okay. So, but in the case where, um, uh, Okay. But by the way, do we actually have that data? Can, can we look at that in the prototype build yet? The dog? No. Uh, no. Data? Okay. Okay. But in any case, so anatomy plot 3D is clearly going to work for dogs as well. So how is this going to look? So it's going to say something like, so this anatomical structure entity is going to be distinguished or not for dog versus human. Presumably that's going to be a different entity for the dog. That would be my expectation, yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't so, see how that's going to work, though. Why? Okay, so look, here's, here's the problem that we've got. In the case of geo position, right, if we say geo, you know, look, if, if we do, like, you know, Apollo 11 landing site, right, that is going to give us a result which is a geo position with geo, you know, with moon as the entity, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have an analogous, so, so whereas... Let's see. If we say, I mean, clearly there is no homologous Eiffel Tower on the moon, at least. Is this not so, yet. like North Pole. Yeah, good question. That's a good question, right? North Pole, which for us maps into what? Oh, don't tell me. It doesn't matter. Okay, that is a named geo position, right, on the Earth. Now, is and this in, assuming... importantly, it's not tied to any geo model. Right, but Hopefully here that should work on the Moon or Venus or. Well, the way this works is that the geo model option has default automatic. So what it does is that it goes first into the first argument of geographics and it sees whether there is a model there. And if there is a model, then it will take that one. And if okay. So, so wait, hold on a second. So if I say, so for example, if I do this, if I say geo list plot, let's take these two. If I say geo list plot of that, um, this thing here, right, which is on the moon. And then I say, comma, uh, this guy here, which is the North Pole. Is this going to do the right thing or is this going to do the wrong thing? It should be on the moon. Cool. Why doesn't it have a second? Oh, it does have a second dot there. Wow, that's pretty cool. I wonder what projection it's using. Does it have any idea? I mean, does it... What projection is that using? I think it's, this is a rectangular. You, yeah, that's my guess. But on the Earth, the corresponding thing, so that's near the equator of the moon, right? Am I right? No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I did the same thing on the Earth, would I get the same? I mean, so in other words, if I take geolist plot, let's just take out that geoposition, wherever it is on the Earth, the homologous geoposition on the Earth, so to speak, comma, the thing on the moon, I mean, sorry, comma, the North Pole, then 
Close off the first geo position. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So it looks like it's the same projection. Yes. Is it? Okay. And, and I guess it's a rectangular because Mercator would send the pole to infinity. So if we see the pole, it cannot oh. be Mercator. Oh, oh, I see. So, so, but if I were to make that something, if I were to make that 89.5, 85. It's still quite large. So I don't, I, Mercator is selected when the size is relatively small, like less than 2,000 kilometers. Okay, but what's that projection there? That's now Lambert Asimuta, which is the one we use for intermediate scales. But why, I mean, since that obviously can represent the pole, why is that not what it's doing in this case here? Because that's going, because it reaches the pole it it jumps to the to the larger case. So for for the largest situations, uh, it chooses um, a good example. So somewhere in the middle of this, the the yeah. automatic heuristic is going to flip over. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you think that's right, basically. Yes. Uh, all these things can be fine tuned a bit, but yeah. I, I was going to say it has to jump somewhere. Right. I have some numbers like two thousand kilometers and I don't know eight thousand kilometers, something like that. And are they scaled for the planet size? Uh, yes, yes. This is all scaled. Yes. By the way, why is this? Isn't that a desert there? Why is there something green there? Um, That's a good question. I don't know. There must be something there. There are various questions on the live stream here. Most recent is why why not have start and end braces colored? Actually, they are. Um, if I make them un unmatched, they will get colored. Um, and uh, they're actually we're coming soon is a whole ghosting mechanism for for uh, making it easier to match things. Um, uh, somebody's asking if dog plot 3D is coming. Um, uh, wow, okay. Some, okay, all right. Let's go back to this question. So I'm not happy with the answer here. So, so the issue with the there's a conflict here because on the one hand we've got an entity that is, you know, a generic femur, for example. So, uh, uh, we we don't have a notion of a generic species no, I, independent I, I homologous. Don't, I don't agree. That's okay. not a generic one. Like the properties attached are clearly for a male human, for an average Fine. Male human. Fine. And the properties okay. are defined what an entity is. No, I understand that. So you're, you're saying, but the point that I'm making is, in, so you're saying in the future, if I say femur, it's going to give an assuming, which says assuming a human male femur, you know, use a female dog femur instead. That's the only realistic way I see this can send to people. Okay. C can we externally influence that assumption? I mean, programmatically. So, like, if we do have anatomy model goes to female dog, you know, is there? No, there's no way. I okay. mean, that, the, to to influence the 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 stack that does the NLU, not a chance. Okay, that would be very hard. I don't think so. I don't, think so. I, don't think so. I mean, when we give it back right now as the assumings and uh, as a default, we can pick it out. On the client side. I mean, but the uh, kernel doesn't get access to the assumings currently, right? Actually, it, it does has have a certain amount of it. Has a... it. It has an environment. When you when you call it from inside, but 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 it's too late, right? I mean, it's yeah. already uh, I mean, right. That's why. No, I'm no, saying. no. It gets all back and it decides which one to take. No, but but Michael, if you're typing. And you haven't even decided, okay? So I'm typing anatomy plot 3D, and I know I'm thinking about a dog. There's nothing mind. we can do. As you know, assuming you have set certain parameters before. Well, but what parameters would I have to have set? I mean, how would set, I actually type this? Set options are not to be plot 3D, uh, the full animal goes to, or well, give or take. Mm. And then kind of the. And, and that would somehow, it somehow magically influence the. Yeah, because control you are inside equal this, mechanism. Yeah, context sensitive control equal. No, we, we certainly have that, but that's a very obscure way to do it—to do some set options to achieve it. 
Look, I mean, the other possibility is we've got this anatomy form wrapper. Oh, gosh. No, no, this cannot do it. This is, that must be totally independent from the entity. Okay. What is anatomy form doing? So anatomy form is allowing us to differently style different elements of an anatomical structure, right? Or different classes of elements. Right. So for example, instead of the bi biceps brachii, you could say control equal muscle. Do or we have an example of that here? We I need think an so. example of that here. Um, this is not a very useful thing here. Um, right, so yeah, we, we need an example, so we should change that to show okay. that case. Mm -hmm. But but um, because that is clearly a useful case. I mean, let, let, let's look, for example, let, let's do that for the foot, okay? Just so we understand what it's doing. Um, so we've got here, um, and by the way, oh boy. I mean, we've got to have the plot range, but the same thing is true with geoplots and people don't have too much trouble with that. The, the plot range, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, obviously you can't say left foot of a human you get in a crazy situation if you're defining the coordinate system, the coordinate range from the left foot of a human, and you've actually got a dog foot in the in the thing you're looking at. Did that make any sense? I didn't understand it. Well, here, let, let me just try typing that what I was going to do here. So anatomy form there. So what am I doing here? I'm saying so, anatomy so, so do form. control equal bone goes to green. OK. Oops. No. Bone. Okay. So bone as an anatomical structure goes, and then that's that. And then what am I doing here? I'm doing that's the anatomy form. And why is that not working like style as a wrapper? Or can I do that as a wrapper? It's like face form. Which I, which, okay. But that's a directive. Right. So, so okay. this so is the, the claim is it's going to show my foot a foot with the bones green. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Except it's not doing it for some reason. It's pro thinking harder. And it's, it's possibly having to get, a, you know, individualized data instead of left oh, foot right. all coming in as, you know, one default styled. Uh, that's a question for the caching infrastructure. Does anybody know whether the, whether anatomy data has the correct caching hierarchy? does have a, a good layout for it, but a lot of, I mean, the way that the caching works is that the majority of these graphics 3Ds are, are stored separately from the normal data repository. So it sometimes takes additional time to fetch them. But what do you think it did in this case? Did it fetch every bone separately? Well, uh, I'm going to take a quick look and see. I don't know how anatomy form fundamentally get, informs the graphics 3D if it's telling it to fetch all Bones. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to look. It's been a while since I've looked into it. Could you guys look and see whether we can reset the caching? Uh, you know, because it probably should, whatever the hierarchy is that is quick to, I mean, the basic rule is if it's quick to specify, it should be in a bucket to be loaded together. In other mm. words, if I were going to label every bone separately with a different color, well, all bets are off. You can pick those up separately. But if it's a single thing that I'm labeling, I should be able to get that whole, uh, you know, collection of, of objects that represent the bones together. Well, I would, I, I will say that I know for a fact that when we collect the information as to what bones are in it, that should definitely be making a single entity value call. The only part part that might not be uh, uh, batched, as you might say, uh, would be the part where it downloads the models because there you're essentially importing models from a CDN server. Okay. And that you can't really, there's not, it's, I don't think import is really hooked up to any kind of a hashing mechanism. Okay, I think that's the thing to look at for Nick. It really, yeah. it comes from the CDN, so that the thing, this is not coming from the entity. entity Correct. The models value themselves value. do. Yeah, the entity, the models themselves do not come down through the entity value call. Basically, just a bunch of URLs come down that says what their uh, CDN location is, and then we do an import on those. It, okay. And those models will be cached on the client side, but it takes. It, it's a little more work to pull them down, and because. 
of the the size associated with them. They're not. We don't have a super diverse subset of the graphics in the pre-cached blocks. But I'll take a okay. look. I haven't looked. So at maybe them. maybe we should expand that. But okay, let, let's let's zoom out again for a second here. So first point is I don't understand. Um, so anatomy form. Michael Hale is pointing out it's like geostyling, and I think that's correct, right? It's a directive in the same way that geostyling is a directive. Is that true? Yeah, I think one can say this. So why is it called anatomy form rather than anatomy styling? Given that the form concept... Um, I guess we thought of this as an extension to the graphics 3D language, and to us it was more like face form. Yeah, I understand. Whereas geostyling is more of a... Um, I mean, th these are all directives. And what is the analogous? So if I say style of blah, comma, anatomy form, is that going to work as a wrapper? So like, for example, if I take this case and I say here, style, is this going to work? My understanding is that the second argument of style has to be something the front end understands. And it so doesn't I have to be. No. Okay. Um, I mean, it just means that you have to process it yourself. By the end of the day. Right, so this, I think, I hope, yeah, that works fine. Excellent. By the way, the default viewpoint for these things is what? From the front. But that's not the front of a foot. That is well, a left well, foot. It, it is, the, it's the front of the body. I so don't believe you. Uh, I'm sorry? I said I don't believe you. Look at that foot. It's, it's, yeah, it's, because the front, the feet aren't point, the toes aren't pointed straight ahead. They're actually slightly outwards. Oh. Oh, I see. But that's a left foot. Yep. Okay, let's look at the two feet together. Ah, oh, sigh. Um, okay, I thought this was going to be a super easy. <laughs> yeah. I, I predict that we're not going to end up de-experimentalizing this stuff, this particular section yet. Because I think with the, particularly the homologous structures and other critters and so on um, are still complicated and the male female things looks complicated to me too okay what's happening here why is this not coming back quickly why is the sun suddenly slowed down because the left foot on its own came back perfectly quickly okay wow i thought that was like bad form i thought it was bad for your hips to have your feet pointed out like that who knows what do i know is that really the the um the sort of the lowest um energy configuration, so to speak, of the human? Yes, it depends on how healthy you are. I know my arches are high, so actually my feet would also be tilted up, so. Okay, who knows? All right, but, but um, uh, okay, so, l l l okay, so first point is, so the style thing worked as expected. Is it documented? Please check that it's documented. Um, is, uh, okay, so let's, let's loop back to the, uh, different animals versus um, male, female, okay? So what we imagine, so are we going to replicate for the male, female models? Do we imagine we have the male, female, you know, male left female and the female left female? Is that the idea? I mean, most of the bones in our particular models actually don't differ. Keiko, you must say what's the... Uh, so actually, I talked to the model provider last year, and he basically mentioned that he planned not to have a different female, uh, uh, a male versus uh, female. Uh, he only thinking about adding uh, pelvic organs as, uh, and skeleton okay. differently. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. But, and, and, but those have to be, um, you know, obviously there's... Uh, you know, there's there's some some intermediate bone somewhere that has to interpolate between the the. Okay, the basic point is, you're saying it so happens that okay, I don't know what do anatomists say. If you hand them a this must be a well known thing. You know, you hand them a random femur. Can they say if it's male or female? Um. I mean, this must be known to archaeologists, if nobody else. 
Uh, I mean, certainly for the whole skeleton, it's rather easy. But but um, if you just give a single peripheral bone, so to speak. Yeah, like a forensic scientist finds a body, can he find a femur and determine if it came from a male or a female? Yeah, that would be the question. So I don't think any of us... I, I, I believe they can. That's how they figure out if there's, it's a female mummy or a male female mummy or whatever. Well, but look, if they or have symbol. all the bones, Johan... To, to you know, no, no, they're they some typical bones, bones they very use. easy, but right, but but do they know they have it? some typical bones they use? Okay, but that if it's pelvic bones, then it's easy, right? So, the um, okay, but the question then remains for us if we have an entity that is left female, if in fact we end up with two identical entities for male and female left female, that's kind of stupid, right? So, how are we going to do this? Keiko, does UMLS uh, differ between the male and the female anatomy parts? No, they don't distinguish male and female, female. So they only distinguish um, the structure that have obvious uh, differences, for example, uh, pelvis, um, of, the, of course, the reproductory organs. They have a specific female, male, like... Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, male. fine. But... but okay, but, but for, for example, take pelvis, for instance, right, which is clearly different. Right? Do they? How do they name those? So they actually call it male pelvis and female pelvis. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that what that is suggesting to me. I mean, uh, let me just ask this: Has has UMLS evolved in this respect, or has UMLS always been this way? It looks like they have been always this way. Okay. So then, a reasonable approach for us would be that most bones, most organs will not disambiguate and they'll just be generic, but some will. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so given that that's the case, if you ask, boy, this is complicated. I mean, when we have a, so everything in the hierarchy above that includes a pelvis, for example, has to, has to disambiguate, right? Yeah, that's right. It starts from a female human body and male human body. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So I think we're coming back to Michael's claim that it all has to be disambiguated at the entity level, which sounds like the only possible thing, which suggests that the anatomy model thing is not going to work. Or at least not at a male-female sort of thing. No, no, well, I guess. Okay. You know, so what are we going to do? Models. Okay. What are we going to do for dog bones? Presumably there, we simply have to do a disambiguation. If you type in left femur, it's going to say assuming human, just like it does for genomics. Assuming human, um, since that is our market, so to speak. Um, and uh, you know, you can pick dog instead. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Right. That sounds correct to me. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Um, I mean, because the other thing that I was think I was thinking a moment ago that was problematic for anatomy model is what if you wanted to do an overlay of you know male versus female pelvis you know um so you could sort of see what the difference between them was well you can you just put a, a list of two entities and when you ask for well, right pelvis. i mean i'm saying that's the obvious thing but if we had right. something you know if we had gone the anatomy model route and yeah, let, let me point out that the male uh, versus female human. Right. The, the analogous question of, you know, where are Paris and London on the moon is surprisingly hard to answer. That is, you know, we, you know, um, um, and we certainly haven't missed that issue, right? In other words, the, making the geo positions correspond, you have to go in and change the geo models by hand, which is perfectly reasonable because that's a very weird operation. Mm -hmm. In this case, each one has a coordinate system. So presumably, a dog has a coordinate system analogous to this, whatever it is, UMNHS or something. Is that correct? What is the coordinate system for the dog? Uh, so um, basically, I aligned to a human model based on the um, bottom of the ankle. So it, and also, it was rescaled uh, based on the length of the female. Okay. So... And, and what kind of dog did you pick? Uh, so it's just general model. It's not uh, specific to any of the species, subspecies. But I mean, there are. Uh, I'm not a big dog expert, but between Chihuahuas and St. Bernards, there's a distinct difference in scale. Yeah, that's right. So it's uh, just a general um, average model. So 
it's so it's like a few feet tall. I mean, it's like a couple of uh, like three feet tall or something. What? What? I mean. Yeah, that's we, um, um. So about the height of the um, uh, human. Uh, sorry, human waist. Okay. Okay. And and we picked that because there is some generic standard, you know, average dog. Or we yeah, it's average. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Okay. Somebody is is telling. Uh, actually, this is useful. Um, uh, some things on the live stream here. Bones can't tell you sex. The skeleton's overall size can give some clues within the same population. Males tend to have larger, more robust bones, blah, blah, blah. Um, right. The skull also has features that can indicate sex, okay? Though less reliably. Hmm. Actually, I think I did know that for a very terrible reason, which I'm not going to explain. Um, that... Uh, I learned on a visit to Cambodia. Um, in any case, the, um, okay, age also differentiates bones because they grow at different rates. That is another can of worms, guys. That's another can of worms. We have an adult skeleton, right? Yes. Right. Do we have any concept of allometric growth stuff that no, no, would no. let us map to a different because we have you know human growth data right so we know and that even gives us relative head size and other things doesn't it i don't think at a scale precise enough to rescale the graphics okay even though it is ultimately there is essentially a growth field that determines i mean you know, it's a fairly coarse thing that determines the relative size, uh, relative growth rates of different parts. We don't have this. We don't have the data. Wait, wait a minute. Are you saying we don't have the data or you think it's a hopeless? No, it, it, we don't have currently relative growth field data. No, I understand that. But that stuff is somewhat known. I mean, that's the oh, whole allometry yeah. business, right? Yeah. yeah. But were we to have it, and I'm not saying we have it now, but I'm just trying to understand as we do the design for the future, were we to have the growth field data, then is there a chance that we could actually map it for different ages? I would guess it would look pretty strange, honestly. Is it always as simple as just scaling it? Because like, for no. example, I know that like in a baby's skull, the, 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 the yeah, sutures the aren't closed. Closed up. Yeah. Actually, our friend Gautam Dasgupta at at Columbia is an expert on on this whole issue, and we could easily ask him. He'll probably tell us that it's way too complicated, or he'll tell us that he's already got models for it. It might be worth at least asking. Um, okay, let's take a look here at other comments on the live stream, actually. Um, dogs have a wide variety of skeletons. Really? You mean their relative sizes of their bones are different? Um, how do you deal with animals that have different shapes during their lifetime, such as butterflies? Ugh. We have not, you know, we've we've got a okay, we've got a long way to go before we reach butterflies. And but but you know, if if we have to, so just to understand, just for a second, the human age thing, that would presumably be handled in the same way that we're using dated for other entities. Is that correct? I mean, what we would expect to do, were we to ever be able to support this? But the, but the data is deducted sugar for a qualifier. I understand, for an entity qualifier. Uh, poverty. I see, but I can still do, if I say something like dated France 1930 or something, right? can't I use that as, does that work? Or is that not going to work? Yes. So I can say entity value. Can I do it with a subvalue form? Yes. Okay, so that's going to give me the population of France in 1930. But it is kind of, in some sense, sugar. Right, but were we to want to do this, parameterize, you know, humans, we could say dated of femur, such yeah. and such, or something analogous to that. Yeah. Okay, look, I think we've still got some problems here. So let, let's, let's, let's walk back through this. So first... I don't think there's a huge rush to de-experimentalize this anatomy stuff. And I would recommend that we don't do it right now. But I think we need to solve this, the, at least the male-female thing, 
and at least some of the somologous bones thing. Comments? I don't think there's anything special with respect to anatomy plot. Any entity value call will have this problem. Which yeah, problem? Example, when you ask, for example, the, the, the disobligation for... male, female, animal, there's nothing really special to anatomy plot, I feel. Fair enough. But okay, look, the, my other objections here are skin style, I hate. I think it's way too generic a name. Agreed. And I really think we need to fix that, but what on earth are we going to call it? And, and why are we specifically identifying the skin as? Because it was, the, it, the, the, it, it was a convenience. Outside. It was a convenience thing. Um, I mean, you could have asked for that part in the list of in the first argument. You could have just said, "Hey, give me the skin of the left femur," and um, it would have you know included it that way. And you could use you know your own stuff. This was uh, considered to be kind of a convenience for. I want to see where this is in context to the skin and allow you some convenient ways to style it while I'm there. It's mostly coming from the alpha representation where we always show anything with respect to the whole body. And because we, here we don't have any more a convenient reference to the whole body anymore. I see. So this is kind of like grid lines. A little bit, yeah. Right, I mean, so, so Michael, isn't it also the case that if you were in the anatomy plot 3D and you said left foot and control equals skin is the two things that you wanted to include that the skin is all of the skin and so you'd suddenly get the entire body. Yes, the skin is all of the skin. But we do have subparts. Yeah, we do have entities. Uh, it's just this is convenient right. way of finding it for you. But the skin is the whole skin, yes. Right, so this would have to say left, you know, which skin part of the of skin is this? Is this only the skin that is near that bone or what? Correct. We have a, a, yeah, a property that basically tells us for each entity what the nearest skin part is. So we're able to grab that conveniently. But, but wait a minute, these skin parts are separately segmented pieces of skin, is that right? Correct, yes. We manually cut the whole body skin into uh, convenient parts. Um, and what are they called? Well, skin of the left hand, skin of the right hand, skin of the left. Okay, but this isn't. This is not a complete leg, right? This is only the top so of the leg. This is the skin of left thigh. I see. Okay. It, 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 we did make them up. They are again from ULMS. Okay. Um. Okay, but so this. This skin style thing is is very much like anatomy form, or no, it isn't. Is no. it like? <sighs> it is okay. more. I think what you said earlier. It's more like a grid line to show you, show you some local reference frame. Yes, I understand. Hmm. And is it the only such? I mean, if if you are an, have an internal organ like a well, the pituitary gland you had here. Yeah, okay. That's pretty weird. What on earth is this weird mask-like thing? It's it's because there's a hole for the back of the neck, and so the opacity is making it look a little weird. The whole thing is blue and transparent, but because uh, the top part of the head... Oh, what is seeing, it? I mean, why is that... Wait a minute. The, the, this that's is, the skin of the head. There's a hole at the bottom and in the back of the skin of the head. Okay. I need to understand this if I'm going to... <laughs> Oh my gosh. I thought this particular section was going to be easy. Why is this so slow as well? This is crazy. Skin is a pretty big object. What? The skin is a pretty big object. Oh wow. So this is where that is totally confusing. So there's several points that are confusing here. So okay, so I get wow, is that where the pituitary guy why is this rotating with the pituitary gun staying fixed? Is this rotating around the pituitary gland? No. Well, why is the pituitary gland? It's, rot it's rotating around the center of the graphic. Just it's a the behavior oh. of graphics 3D. So. Okay, so it so happens that the pituitary gland is in the center. Okay. Approx approximately. So this... Very approximately. <laughs> right, but this is looks totally bizarre. I mean, I don't think we have any choice, but what, what again, what is determining the default viewpoint? Point. Yeah, it's literally viewpoint goes to front, which is just a graphics okay. 3D option. All right, okay, fine. 
But then why is the neck? I don't understand. What? Why is that? It's, di the, it's a diagonal slice. Because the neck is a... Oh, boy. This is pretty confusing. Yeah, okay. All right, fine. Um, you could use it explicitly specified viewpoint in this example to be from the front right then it becomes obvious well fine i think it'd be good to do that this example is very bizarre um i mean it's you know it looks like some kind of weird batman costume type thing um <laughs> the um okay he'll be in the new avengers uh infinity war movie the, um okay Let, let's go back here um Okay, so this question about skin style and what it should be called. I mean, we certainly thought about this when we first, when we last named it, so to speak. I'm not happy about this name, though, because I just think it's going to end up being, unless we think that that name is usable for other meanings of the word skin. And do we have anybody here from the computational geometry team? No? I don't think so. You're is thinking the, this might be something used in conjunction with textures or something, maybe, in, in a general sense? Well, I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd, if it was useful there, I don't know that it would necessarily be a horrible overlap. Um, well, we, we, we should figure that out. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the other possibility, or another possibility, although it also strikes me as weird, is that we could use boundary style for this. <laughs> the boundary of the human. Yeah, the... That's pretty weird. All right, listen, bottom line here, we are close to being able to de-experimentalize these things, and maybe we'll get them in this cycle, but let's move on in this meeting because we've got a lot of other stuff to cover. Okay. okay. Do you need the anatomy people in the meeting, or do you want us to drop out? Or I think you can drop out. I think okay. They're, they're, but let's let's... Uh, I mean, the main thing here is, is skin style the right name? We've got to talk to computational geometry folk. Um, okay. And I think we've more or less resolved the whole question about dogs and other entities. Um, but I would like to just check that and work through it and just see some samples of how that works. Fair? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's move on. Um completely different topic here the next next topic on our list would be um uh okay so the anatomy folk can drop if they want to so next on our list is blockchain functionality um so again i'm not i, I am not convinced that we're going to be able to de-experimentalize yet on this and here's why um i think we're okay in terms of uh, I mean, first of all, our representation of blockchain transaction data seems to me to be not quite there yet. But first of all, how do we feel about the blockchain base business? I think we're going to need, you know, when we say Ethereum here, that means the Ethereum main chain, right? Sorry, do yes. we actually have the blockchain folk here? Uh, yeah, we are here. Yep. Great. Um, okay, so that's the main chain of Ethereum, correct? Right. And I have a feeling, you know, it seems like in the in this world, people are talking about main net and so on more, more and more to distinguish the, the main Ethereum network from other ones. Am I right? Well, uh, at the end, we're going to have uh, both the Ethereum public net and also a test net so that people can test their stuff before putting it in and, and, and you know, and, exp and spending a... Uh, Ether. All yeah, right. And actually, right now, right now it, it works if you do like eth.main. Uh, that's also a valid option, a valid value for blockchain base. And how do we know what the possible blockchains are? It's that documented in the in the blockchain base ref page. Okay. So we can have okay. something like that for the testnet as well. Same for Bitcoin and other blockchains. So you would call that Ethereum testnet? Well, that's to be decided yet. We have to look at what's a name that actually all people use. Okay. 
but I mean, ultimately, these bases for okay. Next question: When we do, given that's Ethereum, if we had authentication, could we connect to any Ethereum network? Not sure what what you mean to any Ethereum network. So uh, okay, let's take a, a a Bitcoin net. Okay, if we stand up our own Bitcoin network, and it has a particular URL. How is this actual connection made? Is my question. It's it's there's some port number going to some machine that has an in this case an Ethereum blockchain on it. Correct. By, by Bitcoin network, you mean having our own node or what? Or making a different blockchain based on Bitcoin? Making a different blockchain. Let's take Ethereum as an example. It's probably more more realistic in modern times. So, like for example, our test net. How is that? Is that ultimately a URL for the base for 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 a peer of that test net, a node of that test net. Uh, I'm, I'm asking this, but I mean, clearly this is a distributed thing. So what we're actually doing under the hood is we're going to a particular node or a particular collection of nodes, right? And those nodes have URLs, don't they? Or they have IP addresses at least. They have IP addresses at least. Okay, but so once you get there, they have an IP address and a port number. Is that a true statement? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And then they need to know once you're on that port, what protocol are you talking on that port? Is that correct? That's correct. And for Ethereum, is there a single protocol or are there multiple possible protocols? To talk with the node, there is a single protocol. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. All right. So, so ultimately, I mean, for our technology stack here, is it the case that if somebody had a private Ethereum blockchain, that they would simply have to specify the IP address of a node of their private Ethereum blockchain, together with certain authentication information, to be able to take our uh, symbolic representation stuff and just point it at their private blockchain? Is that true or is that not true? I think that's true. Um, I was thinking we to have another option to support uh, to define the address of the server or the node, like a geo server in the geographics. Mm -hmm. Well, geo server is not my favorite. Oh, we don't have a dollar geo server. We just have a geo server. I mean, that is not my favorite option. That is definitely an escape valve option. Right. Yeah, it's reasonable though. I mean, but but um, we don't have a geo base because in this case we're doing something. I mean, this is analogous to cloud base. I would have thought we should be able to combine these here. Um, somebody's asking on the live stream. The test net wouldn't be a node. It would just mock the node. Actually, no. A test net would be could be a multi-node test net. That I mean, all of these networks have a bunch of peer-to-peer -peer nodes on them. Okay, so look, I suspect the right thing to do is to somehow combine in blockchain base to somehow combine the protocol specification with the actual raw IP address. Um, uh, Okay, let's let's come back to the let's zoom out for a second. So that's my first comment here is I think we need to think more carefully about exactly how I mean, these particular ones are probably okay. Um, they can always be grandfathered in. Um, but we obviously should be generalizing this going forward. Um, uh, let's see. What are we here? Okay. So once we get into blockchain block data, um, I again I'm I'm skeptical that we're going to be able to de-experimentalize yet. Okay, are we happy with are we happy with all of these names here? I mean, we have been through them several times. Yeah, but since uh, for version twelve, we expect to add more stuff to that, and so the current design I think is fine. But we should think about another design for all the other extra information we'll provide. Like what? Um, oh, okay, very naive question. 
why is the nonce the nonce is just an integer right so it's not given in and it's not a hex hash yeah that's right i'm sorry i'm, I'm answering my own question there okay go ahead what were you going to say yeah uh i was talking more about blockchain transaction data yep um so in in, in that case um so there are subfields of the inputs and outputs we think are useful to provide. And I agree. This is largely incomprehensible right now. Right. Maybe Go since ahead. we also are since we're also planning to include probably at least a bunch more of, of different blockchains, probably then we'll have a better view of what would be the names for for all of these. Right. But I mean specifically here. Okay, so this address, there's nothing I can do with this address right now. Is that correct? You can, because if that address points to the previous output, the output that is linked to this input here, so you know where the, where the money came from. Uh, but we also want to include some additional um, values there also to go back to, the, to other to the previous output. No, but hold on a second. If, if I want to search the blockchain for, for mentions of this address, we have no way to do that right now. Is that correct? We have no blockchain search function yet. No. And this address, I mean, the fact that these are undecorated hex strings rather than something with some symbolic wrapper is a little odd. Um. I mean, how should I think about that address? What 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 is that? What is the full description of that address? Is that so, you know, given this particular blockchain, this is an address of somebody who accessed that blockchain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that address is uh, again linked to the is used in the output that if you see. Um, well, let's pick up another transaction, see if it had some other stuff in it. Yeah. I'm also not thrilled with the fact that the transactions have different things in them each time. Rather than, okay, so what's this one? That one is, what the heck does this mean? Can you, un can you interpret this for me? Yeah. What is so, the sequence number there? Go ahead. But you're, you're, can you go to Bitcoin? Thing is that, um, yeah, it's easier to explain in Bitcoin this. Okay. Should I go further back in the in the blockchain from the most recently mined block, or does it not matter? Uh, it doesn't matter. Just don't get the first transaction because the first transaction is the Coinbase transaction, so get another one. Blah, 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 blah. That's what happens if you mine the blocks only every 10 minutes. Okay. All right. All right. If you see the input there, um, you see there's a source transaction, right? Yep. So, that source transaction, if you go to, actually, you can do blockchain transaction data of that transaction, and you'll see the outputs. Okay. So in that case, if you see, so we, we're seeing address 1412. So you, you see the first output. Um, of that transaction was the input to this transaction. Right. So that's one, one thing we, we need to add there is also the, uh, the output index. How could there be this number of source confirmations? I don't understand that. This is a recently mined block. What does that mean there? Uh... Let me check this. Okay, let's put that on the shelf for a second. My biggest complaint is about what's in the script byte array. Right, we also want to provide the uh, the string form 
of the I showed two things. So they ideally we want to have this script interpreter, right? Where you yep. can what where, where you can have as an input one of these scripts and it will run the Bitcoin script in. And based on that, we can also work on different interpreter for different blockchains. Is it true that, that that script array is ultimately essentially a lambda that eats things like addresses? Uh, it can be anything, because what, what, what the Bitcoin blockchain does is you get the, so you have the, the, the input script that is called the unlocking script, and you combine that with the output script, which is called the locking script, and you combine those and the result of executing those scripts should be true if you want to spend the bitcoins. So you can have anything there. There are some standard scripts, but yeah, you can right. make. But but those scripts have arguments, which are the rest of this data on inputs. Some of that is arguments to the script. Is that true, or is this or is this no. address somewhere inside the script now, and you're just no. showing it outside it by for convenience? They are not necessarily, they're, they're not arguments for this. Um, so the, the arguments for the output script comes in the, they come from the input script where they put all that in the stack and then the output script starts reading from the stack. And the, the other stuff is- so, Sorry, I'm sorry. So, so the input script here Re references this external stuff or does not reference the external stuff? Or is that in that 107 bytes, will I find 1412 blah, 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 or not? What is this anyway? Is this, is this um, some kind of base 64 encoded thing? It's base 58, if I'm wrong. But it's a, what is it ultimately? Is it a hash or is it a, what is it? And if it is a hash, why isn't it a hash given in hex the way this hash is given in hex? Public address so what, that sends the money? What's that? I mean, it makes sense that the public address of the person that sends the money would be somewhere. So maybe it's that. I think it is that. But, but I'm, I'm asking, why is, the, why is it formatted in base 58 here rather than in, in hex? Why are we being? Why are we not being consistent here? Okay, two questions. Why are we not being well, consistent that's, about? That's consistent because when you create a Bitcoin address, you start with the, you start with the with a public key, and and from there you you start applying different caches, and at the end you you have to apply the base fifty eight check um, function to get this address. That's the standard in Bitcoin. Okay, all right, fine. But this business about pushing things on the stack, you're saying that the way this works is the input, what, where are the arguments that are pushed on the stack? Or does this byte array... Push? They live there in the... So probably here in the byte array, you will have a signature and a public key. So those two go to the, uh, to the stack and then the, the output script starts doing some operations over that, so. Okay, but, but so in other words, in principle, everything here, this is this address redundant is what I'm trying to understand. Is that data already contained inside the script byte array? I mean, uh, this data, it, like, like the sequence number, that's metadata for this input that is not contained within the script byte array. Right, yeah, so that address is not, Probably not in that in that um, input script. So, so what that I way. understand is it's a lambda in the sense that it is expecting certain arguments in order to do its job. Is that true? The input script. It's yes. not. Yeah. It's not expecting arguments. Well, then, how does it use the address? Doesn't the address appear in the in the operations that are being done in the instructions that are being done by the virtual machine? Well, it's related to the public key used in the, in the input script. In this case, the address is... Um, I think I'm going to understand this a lot better when, when we actually have the symbolic form of the script byte array. Uh, aren't you getting confused with Ethereum, where you actually expect some 
some inputs and over here you just you know uh, putting things on a ledger inputs outputs or whatever no but it still has instructions there's still you can still reverse that you know you can still decompile that script byte array into some symbolic form that has you know instructions they just don't happen to be turing complete instructions all right right but i'm not sure if it's ex it is expecting something I think we need to see the, the actual symbolic form of these script byte arrays before we can it's, finish that. It's not expecting something. If you want, you, I can send you a notebook with a... Sure, why don't you do that? But sure. um, let's see, some people, most people are asking things which are interesting on the live stream. Um, uh, let's see, is there a, how does the Wolfram blockchain work? It is using multi-chain, right? Um, Right, and it is a blockchain, but it does not have mining, and it does not have a consensus algorithm. Right, it is just the blocks are being added by our system based on any blocks that are submitted are added. Is that correct? Right, we are just uh, we are doing the mining ourselves. Right, and the question of can one set up one's own node? The answer is we're trying to make a kit to let people do that. Is that a true statement? Yeah, that's yes. true. We're trying to do that. How, how are we getting on with that? It, 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 we will get there. It's okay. okay. The, um, I mean, for private clouds, it will be easier to do than in the wild. Is that a true statement? You're not sure. Okay, so I'm somebody sure. is reporting that the, the Genesis block for Bitcoin is wrong. Oh, for goodness sake. I mean, that's probably because we're currently getting this from uh, an API. Yeah, from Lux Cipher. Yeah, we, we noticed something like that before. Yeah, sir, uh, that's a known not... issue where we were tracking it. So. But, but, but yeah. wait a are, we, are we in fact solving that by, I mean, we're, we're getting our own node, right? Right, that's not happening with our nodes. That bug is not happening for our nodes. Do, do we have our nodes up and running yet? We have them running here, but you don't have the backlit to connect to those. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm going to send you the notebook right now. Okay, all right, we'll look at this quickly. Look, the bottom line here again, sadly, is this is another thing we're not quite ready to de-experimentalize. I mean, I think we're, we're circling around here. This is looking good, but let's not commit to these functions forever. Okay, if this notebook is coming right now, we can look at it. Otherwise, I, I want to go on to the next item here. Do you receive it? Okay, I received it. Yes. So it's it's about another theme, but there's a section there where I explain. Um, so if you just scroll down there, Bitcoin script. Yep. So. Wait, so wait, this is, wait, wait, is is this notebook a request for some additional hash types? Yes. And is that in process? Uh, that's in process, yes. Okay. So if you scroll down to the, you scroll down to the part that says lock and script and lock and script. This is just a, a brief explanation. Um, what on earth is this? So this is the decompilation of that script. Is that correct? Right, so what you see in the locking script is the, the one that comes from the output and the unlocking script comes from the input. So what you see in the input script, the first element there is the, is the signature and the second one is a public key. So Which way do I read this? Do I read it left to right or right to left, the opcodes? Left to right. So opdupe is doing something to the stack. Yeah, it's duplicating the first element. What, from the what stack. is the initial state of the stack when the when the virtual machine is started here? In this case, the the initial well, the initial is 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 just an empty stack, and when it runs this input script, it will um, add to deal push to the stack the signature and the private and the, and the public see. key. So if you scroll down, I think I have a small table there. Um, Okay, so what you're basically saying, oh boy, and this is the check, this is the confirmation, which we're always going to need functions to do. To right, that's, um, that's one of the things we need, yeah, to, to run the, 
if you see the output script, you see one OP check seek function. That's something yep. we are including in the language. That has to return true for the for the user to be able to use the bitcoins, because I that understand. verifies that you have the the private right, key. So that that is an internal piece to what is currently the decrypt function, if I'm not mistaken. The fact that this works would otherwise, this is basically determining whether the decrypt function will give an error, I believe. Right. So I agree that it probably needs a, I mean, it, it needs a, a general function, which is, uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Well, just for once, something that is not programmatic right now needs to be made programmatic. Okay. So but fundamentally, what you're saying is the input script is run, it puts some stuff on the stack, the output script is then run. Is that right? Right. And my, my point before was that, so in this case, you are seeing one of the most um, used scripts. I think like 90% of 95% of the scripts are um, like this kind, but you can make a script that just says, I don't know, two plus two, and I another understand. one then. Yeah, right. Um, okay, I mean, it is something we could, I mean, in the future, as we get more sophisticated computational smart contracts, we'll wind up with some repositories containing these things. But okay, what you're saying, uh, this is kind of, we still need to do some work here, because we've got to have it be really clean that you can take the stuff from this inspector of the blockchain and just simply run it in the virtual machine. And that's not the case right now. There's a big complicated mess right now. Right? We, you can't just take this lump of, of, of output and say, you know, run in the Bitcoin virtual machine when we have our virtual machine function. And we need to make sure that this is designed so that that can work. Right. Okay. Let's proceed here. Next on our list, so that so unfortunately we're 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 failing two for two here, not being able to de-experimentalize these things. Um, let's um let's continue. The next thing we have was text translation, um, which uh, what do we know about um um. So, so far as we know, this is ready to go. Why did it have an extra space there? Or is that how you write it in French? I don't think it is. This relates a little bit to, uh, by the way, can text translation take something with text elements as well? Or can it only take a plain string? Uh, just plain text. Oh, text elements like what? Uh, like what you get from text structure. So if I say here, were I to have the output of text structure, come on, why is this running so slowly for me? Something is weird with this, oh, whatever. Okay, there we go. So this thing, if I look at its input form, is a bunch of nested text elements, right? right? Were I to feed that to text translation, I bet it's gonna barf. Oh yeah, a bit the same. But in a perfect world, even though our text translation system does not yet understand uh, the markup that we're giving it here, in some kind of glorious future, this, um, um, You know, one would be able to mark this up, telling it that such and such a thing was a noun, for example, and that would help the translator. I'm just pointing out we should make sure that this works. This is easier to flatten out. Actually, I don't think we have a, a specific function for flattening this out. Is, is Etienne here? Did I hear Etienne earlier? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, no, we don't. Something we probably should think about, right? Because, yeah. um, uh, okay. But anyway, text translation strikes me. I, I think, okay, I'm good with this. I don't have a problem with, with de-experimentalizing this. Anybody got any comments 
Any objections to that? Nope. Okay. Just, just the fact that we might have our own translation models in some future and not use an API, but I don't think this changed the design. It does not change the design. No, there will probably be another value for the meta option, right? Yes, it would just be automatic or something, or or our own uh, internal version. Okay, right, good. All right, we got one de-experimentalized. Okay, let's talk about web image search, which is the next on our list. Web image search of what's a good um, what were we looking at before? We were looking at some. Um, let's do giraffes. Okay, so I have an objection here, which I I which is this data set that comes out, this is almost never what I want. Right, I guess probably usually you thumbnails images in some cases. That's correct. But now the, the consistent thing, unfortunately, web search is doing that. I, I use web search a lot less often than I use web image search. Mm -hmm. um, now with web search, what on earth would I actually end up wanting if I were to want just a list of things? Who Does anybody here use web search very much? I mean, I use web image search all the time. Yeah. Same for me. I guess the links are the most important thing. What is that? I mean, that's cool that I can just go to the April the giraffe, for example. Okay, cool. I wonder which one is April. Maybe they're all April Photoshop together. Um, okay. But so the question here is, do we break with consistency and make web image search return the list of thumbnails, or do we keep consistency and then require one to have to type in uh, comma thumbnails all the time? What do people so when, I use web, when I use web image search, I always use images. I just want the full images. Oh, that's Not even the thumbnails. Huh. Okay. So my comment um, about this was that we've been talking about this search result object to standardize all the outputs of functions and search stuff, right? No, oh, you're right. Yes. Oh boy, we're not ready for this then. Because if we if we bring in that thing, then we're not going to be returning a data set anymore. We're going to be returning some kind of that web search result, that the search result object. So you're you're saying that that will be analogous to text search. Um, I need an actual example here. Uh, well, I'd need this index, right? So you're saying, I mean, this particular thing, what, what is the status of that? I, we, we talked about that a few weeks ago. Right now, this thing is returning that list of content objects, right? What is this weird thing? Okay, so that's a search result object. So this is no longer correct. That documentation is wrong. And what the heck is this showing? What is that? Result count three, but where are they? That's really weird. Why did the other one give result count three and it had no, no content? That is deeply suspicious to me that, oh, I see. So if I say, dodo, there better not be a dodo in the Iniad. There could be a dodo in Alice. Where is it? Where is it? There is a bug here. See that? Our node? Are you seeing that? The second time it shows it. Okay. Um... All right, so so basically you're saying that we should be considering, and, and I think we're not going to do, we're going to have the, the display form of the search result object be the actual search, you know, the equivalent of the search engine result page. All right, we're not ready to de-experimentalize web engine search and web search, sadly. Nor are we ready to de-experimentalize Wikipedia search because it's going to have the same issue. Right. Dollar service credits available, not a chance. We're not de-experimentalizing that. That's in the middle of some right. whole complicated discussion. 
for, for web search and web image search, I always use a max items option. So I wonder if we should make it a third argument rather than an option. Like, you know, web image search, giraffe thumbnails, comma, 20. Yes. What other... No, I, I agree. All that. options are recommended. What's that? All options are documented if you if you want to see all of them in the scope section, I believe. Except we are not linking to allow adult content. I guess we, I mean, we made the decision to make that a little bit obscure, right? And so it doesn't have its own documentation page. Right. It's working fine, so. Fine. Um, okay. Uh, I agree with Etienne's point that I also agree that this is that it will be useful to be able to have like comma 20 here. So long as we are still convinced that we need this thumbnails thing, which I guess from Arnaud's point that he sometimes wants full resolution images, that makes some sense. Look, I agree. Why don't you why don't you guys put in max items as a third argument, allowing the option as well? Yeah, we can do that. Um What is this? So we have an example here. Why is the, we have an example. What on earth are we about to show here? I was just going through some notebooks where I had, was using web search. Okay. Is this more than entertainment value? It's mostly entertainment value. Okay, fine. The, um, all right. Uh, okay, the, the next thing on our list here, and we're going to have to wrap in a minute, um, is uh, Curry. Do you still need a blockchain and integrated services, people? No, I don't think so. But we're basically going to wrap this meeting in a minute anyway. Um, maybe we can just stick around for Curry for just a minute. Sure. You might have sure. opinions. And now we've gone into some kind of... The, the party birds are, are attacking our... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I that that taking... There we go. It's, it's image identifying full yes, images. So it's probably the, the full images are maybe a little bit too big for this. Or... Oh, why are you bothering to identify the full images? It could identify the thumbnails perfectly well. Yeah, but you probably get different results then, right? I doubt it. Okay, well, I was just for entertainment. So. Flip. Phillips is commenting on the service credits thing is causing trouble for his students. We know it's a mess. It's going away. Um, somebody actually, it will be useful. Maybe we could ask Clayton to follow up with Flip and find out exactly what his issue is there. It will be useful for us to know. But we know it's a mess. Um, okay. The uh, Okay, just for one second, just for the sake of seeing if we can... Can we de-experimentalize this creature? I mean, I'm a little bit nervous because I don't think it's been yet that widely used. It's, yeah, it's not being used. I've seen it used in Mathematical Stack Exchange a few times, but uh, and people got it, its meaning correct. What, um, what cases did they use? To, to convert some functions into operating forms. Right. Like, I, I've seen Quantile, for example, and things like that. Okay, is, what about these more sophisticated forms here? Um, I'm, I've seen, I've seen somebody commenting on, on, on possible alternatives to that. But okay. um, I don't think we're ready to de-experimentalize this thing. I mean, I, the, the base basic things are fine. Mm -hmm. These ones here seem complicated. Okay, let me make a meta comment about this meeting. We got a lot less far than I'd hoped we would get. We got kind of stuck in a in in a couple of horrible morasses there. Um, I am expecting. I'm looking ahead at some of the other um, uh, things we have to look at. I mean, the next few sections are external programs. Um, and uh, this is going to be, no, there's no way. Yeah, I see your recommendations here are um, 
yeah, the web driver Chrome stuff and so on is going into a different function. All right. Okay, well, look, I think this, um, uh, yeah, we, we've got lots more work to do on these. Um, I would like to comment that in general, the thing that we're trying to achieve here, you know, even when we're not de-experimentalizing, we're trying to move towards improving these functions so that even if they don't make it for this version to be non-experimental, they can get improved for this version and made non-experimental in a future version. Make sense to everybody? The, um, okay, well, let's wrap it up here. Thank you to the people on the live stream. Uh, quite a number of uh, interesting and useful comments. Um, look forward to uh, um, having you on the live stream again soon. And I think this this series of meetings which will be on quite diverse topics is going to continue with some intensity over the next few weeks. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Bye. Bye.